Hey boys and girls, the Junk Man here with another detailing related video. And in this video, I'm actually not going to do any detailing stuff, but I'm going to direct you to three, count them, three new videos that I have uploaded to YouTube and that are available for you to watch right now, except for they are not on my YouTube channel. They are actually located over at the Rag Company's YouTube channel. The reason being, I took a little time and the folks at the Rag Company were nice enough, Jeff and uh, Carolyn, flew me over to Boise, Idaho, and uh, I spent a week or so out there with them, uh, getting familiar with how they do things. Uh, I also did a detailing clinic and I also did a clinic for the Corvette Club out there which is going to be on the Velocity channel um, bits and pieces of it will be and uh, I'm trying to remember what the name of the show I believe it's called Corvette Nation so uh, for those folks of you who have Velocity, velocity you can uh, catch I don't know how much of me is on there but I'm on there doing my thing with a 1963 split window Corvette. Uh, it was a beautiful car, but it was full of daggone swirls. Good Lord, that thing was a mess. Um, but anyway, uh, this video is actually um, serving two purposes with this. I'm gonna tell you about my trip and I want to get you all over to the Rag Company's YouTube channel. For those of you who know how to do it. It's youtube.com forward slash the rag company, all one word. Or you can just type in the rag company in YouTube search uh, window and I hit enter and it'll, it'll find it for you and then you can watch. I have three videos over there. One of them being on the different types of clay mediums and I actually use them, compare them to each other and give you my take on which one I thought was the best. And you'll be surprised at what I found. I, I used the clay towel, the clay eraser, and traditional clay. Let's see, did I use anything else? Traditional clay, the eraser, and the towel. Yeah, those are the three that I use. So you'll have to jump over to the Rag Company's YouTube channel to check that video out and see my results. Um, I also did a video on a, com a comparison between microfiber pads and uh, foam pads. Now most of my videos I pretty much always use foam. Uh, I've heard nice things about microfiber. Um, I don't see a whole lot of people using them uh, but uh, I gave it a try so you'll have to go over there and see how uh, that test went out. By the way the rag company is now carrying products from Optimum. So for all of you Optimum fans and those of you who have watched my videos where I used Optimum products, uh, I think I only have one on YouTube. The rest of them are on my DVD. So on my DVD, DVD, that's I believe all I used was the Optimum stuff. So it's a great line. Uh, the reason I like Optimum is because they manufacture the chemicals that they sell. So they're not reselling some rebottled something of somebody else's. These are their products. Their engineers came up with this. This is what they make and they sell. So any company that does that, uh, Minzerna, uh, Meguiar's, uh, companies that actually manufacture what they sell, those are the products that I like to use. Because if I have to pick up the phone, uh, high temp is another one. Uh, if I have to pick up the phone and call someone, um, I know that I'm going to speak to someone who is knowledgeable about that product. So I don't have to go, you know, go with somebody who rebrands what they sell and then trust them. I like talking to the actual chemist or in some cases the chemist's son or somebody that actually knows what they're talking about. So that's why I like using products that are sold by the company that manufactures them. So the Rag Company, like I said, is carrying the Optimum Products line. If you jump on their website now, 
they uh, have a lot of them on there that you can readily buy it's nice when you can get the majority of your detailing products all in one location shipping you know that saves on you big time so now you got your your towels and your compounds and polishes clay and other things that they sell all in one location man that's one that's one box you sitting camped out on your porch, you know, got your little fire going in the middle of the night, waiting on UPS to show up with that one box. So you'd be like, yeah, baby. You ready to detail when that box gets there and you can run out to your garage and do your thing. So that's, uh, that's another plus. So I've got the pad comparison video, the clan medium video, and I also have a how I wash my uh, pads when I am away from home when I don't have access to my pad washing buckets because that's normally the, what I use is the pad washer bucket uh, there are a lot of guys that take one look at the price of the pad washer bucket and they like man I, man, I ain't paying that much for no daggone but I don't blame you cause I sure didn't pay for mine somebody sent me two <laughs> cause I sure wasn't gonna pay that much for them either so but uh, hey if you have them they nice now if you like have a detailing business where you busting out cars left and right oh it's worth the money that pad washer bucket is worth the money but you know for us weekend warrior type guys you know we ain't, you know we don't do this for a living and we ain't trying to be you know busting out that many pads we ain't washing that many pads you know it's kind of overkill so I've got a video that shows how I wash pads when I'm on the road or when I don't have access to my pad washer bucket so that's three videos. They are located over at the Rad Company's YouTube channel. So that's youtube.com forward slash the Rad Company. And uh, you can go over there and watch those videos. They're actually shorter than most of my videos. And unlike all of my videos, they have been edited by the Rad Company's very own Gabe. Garcia, shout out to you, Gabe. Good job. You did a fine job editing. You know I wasn't going to edit them. So that's a good job by Gabe. Gabe edited those. So you can go check them out. Nice, short, to the point, those videos. So that's the first announcement. Now, for the second announcement, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you about my trip to Boise, Idaho. Now, I had a blast. Jeff and Carolyn are about the best hosts you can ever have to take you uh, around the city and, sh and show you a good time. I had a blast. The weather was perfect. The humidity was like 6%. Uh, what else did I do? I got to see the uh, Smurf field, went out there, checked out the Broncos field, and I bought me a daggone Broncos hat and lost it in the airport. I was mad. I wanted to bring that back to the field with me. But uh, I lost another hat. I'll tell you about that too. But um, I had a really good time. Food was great. Um, food was delicious. I ate good. I ate good. And uh, Jeff and Carolyn were nice enough to put me up at third pad. I mean, trust me, the junk man was living like a king, okay? I, I had a great time while I was out there. But uh, one of the things that they told me that we were going to do for entertainment, just to help show me a good time, is we were going to go whitewater rafting. Now... Let me tell you about our whitewater rafting trip. First of all, I was like, well, the junk man, he don't float. You know, I really don't swim. I'm kind of one of them kind of people that when I get in water, I'm, I'm going somewhere. I ain't just, you know, just, just sitting back enjoying the scenery. No, if I get in some water, I'm going somewhere or I, either that or I'm in a shower, you know, so uh, it's funny. Somebody said, well, wasn't you in the Marines? Yeah. But see, in the Marines, they taught us how to make flotation devices out of our pants. I was a flotation device making fool. I could strip up out my pants, tie them dang old legs together, put a bunch of bubbles in there, phoom, put them legs around my neck, be floating all day long. Put some more bubbles in there when I need to. I could make a flotation device out of my pants like nothing because I couldn't swim. So it was like, that was one class that I passed well, I was on the Dean's list the whole time. <laughs> so, but uh, matter of fact, my buddies in the Marines used to call me Aqua Rock, you know, because Marines, we got to get in the water. So, you know, I could get in the water, walk. I don't want a whole lot of money doing this. I used to 
They tell you, you can't lay at the bottom of a pool. Psh. I used to get in a pool, go lay on the bottom. It was, how do you do that? It's impossible. I could do that. I could get in the pool, walk across the bottom, and come out the other side. I don't know. <laughs> That's just how bad I could swim. So they gave me a nickname, Aqua Rock. <laughs> so they started calling me. But uh, enough of that. Um, so here's what I did in preparation for my white water rafting trip. Now the first thing I was thinking to myself is I was like, hmm, white water rafting. Number one, I can't swim. That was like the number one. But we was gonna have old life vests, you know, and life vests work, they'll keep you afloat. That was number one. Uh, number two, I was like, I was thinking to myself, how many brothers have I seen white water rafting? And I start thinking, I was like, Man, I ain't seen none. So, you know, first thing I do is I jump on YouTube because I want to get some pointers, you know, so I can kind of know what I'm doing before I get there. So, I, you know, I'm looking and, and I'm like, well, how do they stay in the boat? Because, you know, you see people falling out the boat all the time. Well, in the boat, they had a place where you stick your feet up under it and you kind of lock your feet in there and, and you paddle in and that's how they stay in the boat. So, because I, I was wondering about it, I was like, I don't want to get thrown out the boat. Well, when we got to where we put the boats in the water, the first thing I noticed was the boats was filling up with water. And I was like, oh, <laughs> wait a minute. That can't be right. And one of the instructors, uh, guys with experience, been there, uh, had done this, knows what he's doing. He's like, no, that's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to let water in and let water out. Now, see, I'm thinking, that boat's broke. <laughs> Let me go get in another boat. But that's what they do. They let water in, and they got to, because you got water coming over the boat. You don't want it to fill up. You want that water to go somewhere, and that's what it does. It's a miracle how that works. I would have never thought that. But uh, while I was watching the videos on YouTube and seeing how they do it, when we got to our boats, they didn't have them little places for you to put your feet. So I was like, oh, well. Where do your feet go? And they was like, well, see, you lock one foot under the roll, the inflated roll, and then your other foot goes on the outside, and then when the water gets rough, you just squeeze your thighs together. And, and I was looking at them like, that dude's not sound like it's going to work. <laughs> I was I'm like, nah, I don't think that, that don't sound right. But I was like, I ain't never done this before, so I want to be able to say at least I've done it one time. Hope I don't kill myself, but I'm gonna do it one time. Cause when I was watching the YouTube videos, I didn't see no brothers on them boats either. And I was like, man, if some brothers saw me right now, they'd be like, what the, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> so, so anyway, we we go out and we take off. You know, we get instructions on what to do. One of the things they tell us to do is if you fall out of the boat, keep your feet downstream, pointed downstream so that you don't run head first into a rock and um, you don't bang your knees on something. So that was one of the things they told us to do. And another thing they told us to do was if you do fall in in a rapid where the water has got you going all up and down crazy like that, you breathe on the downstroke. And when you come it up, you close your mouth because that's when the water is going to go in your mouth if you got your mouth open. So, and let me tell you, it ain't like it ain't like you go down and then oh uh, no. It's like you like this. <laughs> and when, when, the, when you in the water, when you ain't supposed to be, or where you don't want to be, you gotta be thinking fast. And that was and that's where my Marine Corps training kicks in because when, when you first when an incident first happens, you get that immediately uh, that immediate adrenaline rush of like, oh dang, oh dang. Well, actually, we say something else, but it's a family show. <laughs> so, so you get that first, and then your training kicks right in, and you calm the heck down, and you start thinking about what you're supposed to do. Well, that came in big time handy because when we hit our first rapid, you know, and they tell you the way you stay in the boat is you got to pedal through the rapid because as you digging in that water, it's pushing you back in the boat. So you don't want to be just riding along, being lazy or whatever, because your butt's going out. So you got to be paddling in the rapids. Well, we went through the first rapid. I was like, we made it. You know, no biggie. 
I survived. And so I'm sitting back there now. The, the river's real calm, and I'm sitting back. There, I'm like, man, I've had rougher women than that. And everybody looks at me like, oh, you did not go there. And uh, somebody said, wait till we get to trestle. And I was like, what's trestle? What's that mean? Wait till we get to trestle. And I, and it turns out that whitewater rafting aficionados. They have names in the river for different parts of the river where something happens. And uh, as I was looking at YouTube, I saw this one river and they had this point that was called the Maytag. I was like, the Maytag. I immediately knew what time it was with a name like the Maytag. And, and when the boats got there, it was this freaking huge boulder and the water was rushing around it and it created these two big gigantic circle swirls and the boat was like getting just thrown all over the place. It was like, and I was thinking, boy, I hope Trestle ain't like that. So anyway, we get to Trestle and it turns out it was a train bridge, a Trestle train bridge. And so, you know, the guy that's leading us, he's like, all right, here we go, let's start digging. So here we go. I'm digging. Oh man. Mother Nature reached up out that river and grabbed my butt. And she was like, come here, big sexy. Well, oh, <laughs> she threw me in the water, was like, rougher women than me, huh? Ooh. Ooh. And, and I was like, blah, blah, blah. I was drinking up all kinds of water. Ooh. And she was just dunking my behind. And I was trying to open my eyes and I was getting, but the whole time, this was what's funny, the whole time, I did not lose my oar. It wasn't because I was not trying to lose my oar, it was because in my mind, I went back to Marine Corps training, I thought it was my rifle. <laughs> and the last thing you do, you can lose every stitch of clothes you have, but you daggone it, you better not lose your rifle. Boy, I had a death grip on that oar. <laughs> and when I came up at the, some, finally, after I got washed, I mean, I got thoroughly baptized, she, Mother Nature was like, oh, talk about me like, oh, she was dunking my behind. When, when they, they finally pulled me back into the boat, and I was like, I was like, man, <laughs> I did not like that experience. And uh, they was like, yeah, yeah, that's what happens when you diss Mother Nature. I was like, I had a whole new respect for the river. So much so that for the rest of the, I don't know if it was two, three miles that we went and all the rapids we hit, I did not fall out that boat again. <laughs> I had the death grip going with the foot, my thighs, and I was pedaling like a madman. Because <laughs> I was not going back in that water like that. But we had this one point, and this is where I'm gonna show y'all video. Show y'all a video. I'm gonna edit a video. I'm actually do some editing. I'm gonna edit a video into this video. Uh, they had this point along the river where we took a break, and all the young people and me, I don't know. I should have caught that. That's what I should have caught. I should have caught the fact that all the young people that were like 20 years younger than me. And me, we were going to go do something crazy. I don't know what the heck I was thinking. They have this area called Jump Rock. All right. So here's what happens. You jump off this rock into this the crazy rapids that's going by. It's like the water's all crazy and it's going by real quick. And when you hit the water, you're supposed to body surf uh, down the river to the point where everybody's camped out at. And I was like, I knew this was a bad idea. I was thinking, man, did this man, you know. And, and here's the thing about it. You know how you got, and you see the, the angel and the devil in the movies and stuff on people's shoulders trying to give them advice? I don't have that. that. That's not what I got. I got Chesty Puller. Chesty Puller now, he was a hardcore Serious marine devil dog. I mean, you gotta go look him up. I mean, he was a salty dog. He was he was er gudgy to the max. Er, that, that was Chesty Puller. He the one 
They be giving me all this bad advice in my old age. When I was young, I could listen to them. You know, oh, you could jump that building in a single bound. When I was young, I could listen to them. Chester be getting my buddy in trouble now. But see, on the other shoulder, on the other shoulder, see, Chester's actually my devil now. On the other shoulder, I got Dave Chappelle. And Dave be giving me good advice. But this time, I wasn't listening to him. Dave like, what the hell? What are you thinking of? <laughs> Dave, was, Dave took one look at that water. He's like, man, take your butt back over there with the old people. What are you thinking about? And I didn't listen to him. Dave was giving me good advice, but I wasn't listening to him. So, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a stop right here and edit in the part of the video where uh, Gabe is going to introduce me and you're going to see people jumping into the water younger than me, much younger than me and and then he's going to put a GoPro camera on me and then I'm going to jump in there like an idiot <laughs> and you're going to see what happens. Remember I can't swim now, alright? Alright, so here we go. Here, 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 here's this part. Hey boys and girls, the junk man here, all the way from Boise, Idaho, and I'm about to go off Jump Rock. Now, in the Marines, they used to call me Aqua Rock, because I can jump in a lake and walk across the bottom of it. So I gotta be good at holding my breath, but <laughs> hopefully after this, there will be an after this, but if I don't make it, let the record show it. Damn it, I was looking good. <laughs> the film right about there right where I did right before I hit the water because in my mind I heard this voice and it seemed like everything went slow motion and the voice was the guy from the Dukes of Hazard. you know how when the Dukes they jump off this mountain in General Lee and then they freeze frame and then you hear that guy go them Duke boys about to get themselves in some trouble <laughs> That's what I heard. It was like, it was like, right before I hit the water, their voice was like, boy, what the hell you thinking about? <laughs> Do you know what you're getting ready to get yourself into? Oh, man. Oh, so, okay, so I'm, I'm going to let the film roll from here. And I want you to notice, when I go in the water, the camera goes underwater. Now, you know, it was mounted up here, so it, there should have been some daylight because I was supposed to have been floating on top of the water like everybody else did. But it goes underwater because that's where I was. <laughs> I was, I was, and I was trying to figure out, you know, go down, breathe, come up, don't open your mouth. Go down, breathe, come up, don't open your mouth. I was, I was trying to get that down. And uh, it took a couple of revolutions for me to figure it out. And, and the funny thing about it was, I was doing it right in the fact that I was taking in air on the downstroke, but I wasn't exhaling. So <laughs> eventually I had no more air to take in. I needed to let some air out. And guess what I let it out? When the dag on on the upstroke, got a mouthful of water. I drunk up half that river had to drop two inches after I got done <laughs> doing my thing. But so here we go. I'm gonna let you go to that part right now. Here it is. Thank <laughs> you. 
boy. Ah, this is fun. Okay, now, at this point, you'll notice that the bubbles, you know, it was less of them. So, at that point, I had hit the calm spot in the river. And what they told us was, when you get to the calm spot, was to swim over to the left where everybody else was. And, and they said, if you have any trouble, we got a 30-foot rope, and we'll throw it out, and you just grab the rope and we'll pull you in. So, I'm about 15 feet out. They got 30 feet of rope, okay? And when we got to that con spot, everybody's like, okay, swim to the left. I roll over the swim and I take about two strokes and I realize something. Man, I got zero energy. I'm talking none. I am through. Stick a fork in me because I am done. <laughs> and I, so I, I kind of roll back over my back. I'm like, throw the rope. <laughs> Give me the rope because <laughs> I am, I, it was no way that I was going to make it over there. Plus I had, look, the current was pulling me too. I mean, it wasn't real bad, but I was exhausted. So the guy with the rope steps up to the edge of the bank. 30 feet of rope. I'm 15 feet out. He goes, the rope goes 10 feet, stops in a knot, and falls into the water. And so I'm like thinking, oh, they they playing, they pulling one on the junk man. They try to get me to panic. They they pulling one over on me. So I'm thinking, there's another guy, he's just a couple feet down there. He gonna throw the real rope. And <laughs> and it was sort of like no, there was nobody else. And there was a bend in the river where I was going to go around some trees. And so it kind of looked like this. Let me give you a visual. All right, throw the rope. Throw the rope. Rope gets thrown. Splash. It's too short. And here comes the junk man. Man, it was like, but no, no, I, I got to do it again because, because I was thinking that, like I said, there was somebody else with another rope. So I thought they was, no, nah, no, nah, that's the way I look. I, <laughs> that's the way I look. I was like, uh, fellas, can we get another rope? <laughs> oh, man. So when I go around that bend, I realize, hmm, got myself in a little predicament here. Hmm, Dave Chappelle's like, I told you, I told you. <laughs> and, then, and then Chesky Puller like, oh, you'll be okay. You know, man up. <laughs> Dave was like, you fool, you idiot, I told you. <laughs> so, so here I go around this bend, and as I'm looking, you know, I'm, you know, I'm kind of trying to figure out what I'm gonna do. There's a boat with some people parked on the side of the river. And they looking at me and they like, where are you going? And I was like, like I don't know. Here, I'm gonna I'm play that part of the video. Here it goes. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> So anyway, <laughs> I'm thinking I'm probably going wherever the river wants me to go. You know, it's not like I really had much of a choice at this point. Um, at least I was floating and the water was calm, at least right there where I was at. But as I look down between my feet, I see there's another rapid coming. And But when I'm laying on the river, it don't look that bad. It, you know, it, it was like, well, it's just a little rapid. Oh boy, <laughs> tis was not the case, boys and girls. <laughs> the junk man was gonna get another bath. Mother Nature was like floating there, just like, come on down to mama. Come on to mama, cause I got some more loving for you. <laughs> so there I go. So needless to say, I went through this second rapid and my butt was getting dunked. 
And so I'll let me let me let me let that part of the video roll. So here, here that part goes. And you'll notice the bubbles. Um, Cause all of a sudden a whole bunch of bubbles show up as me underwater. Check it out. So, here I am. I have done went through two rapids on my back, underwater, drinking up half the river, all right? When I come out that second rapid, while I was underwater, Chesty Puller must have stuffed some seaweed in my mouth, cause let me tell you, it was like, Bing, bing. I mean, I got energy out of nowhere. Now, I really can't swim, but I can dog paddle. But here's the deal. I wasn't dog paddling. I was devil dog paddling. Look, this is what I look like coming across the water. Check this out. Oh, oh, I was dog pedaling my behind off. I had energy. Oh, you know, for those of you old enough to remember the, the TV show Ultraman, remember when Ultraman got, he'd be in a fight and he start getting weak and his, his light start beeping and flashing. We like, oh, you know, we was kids. Oh, come on, Ultraman. You can't get weak now. Oh, see, my Ultraman light was solid. <laughs> that joke was like, man, Ultraman gonna die. <laughs> My light was solid, but boy, I was not going to go through a third rabbit on my back. I was done drinking up river. You know, that was some of the cleanest water that I ever <laughs> drunk out of a river. I, that, I couldn't believe how clean that water. It was refreshing. And it, and it wasn't cold either. It was kind of cool. But, uh, which, which at this point, uh, it's neither here nor there. <laughs> but I, I just remember that. It didn't taste bad. I just didn't need that much of it. But, um, so anyway, I'm dog paddling like crazy, devil dog paddling, um, to get to the other side, to the side. And I finally start seeing rocks under my feet. Oh man, I was like, oh, earth, there's earth. <laughs> oh man. When my feet finally touch something, normally, you know, where the rocks are, you know, a brother be thinking, there's probably snakes and stuff in the water. So I don't want to be standing on these rocks where the snakes could get me. Look, I was so happy when I was able to get my knees out of the water and I was standing on some solid ground. I stood there and took it in. And I was like, let me roll the video and let you see that part. You can, you can just listen to the way I sound. You can tell I was through. Check it out. I'm good now. <laughs> Kept the GoPro. Woo! Oh man. Yeah. Well, I drunk up half the river. 
But still in one piece. Uh. Uh. So let's get this thing recording. Huh? Woo! That was a wild one. I don't think I'll be doing that anytime soon. Again. Oh. So anyway, um, I'm at this point where I'm, I'm looking at the water. I can't believe, I don't know where I am. I don't know how far downstream I went. Um, and uh, I'm standing there looking at the water like, like Mother Nature. She, <laughs> Mother Nature was out there floating like, come on back to mama. Come on, big boy. Come on, come see me. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at, and then just to show you how much of a nut house it is up here, because sometimes, sometimes I crack myself up. But I swear, this is <laughs> while I was standing there looking at the water, kind of trying to wrap my mind around what what I had done. I was imagining this fish that swam up and was looking at me, and and the fish was like, he was looking at me. He was like, he looked again. He got a little closer, he looked, and then he turned around, he was like, Hey Steve, it's a brother whitewater rafting. And then I heard this voice be like, man, quit lying, brothers don't be whitewater rafting. He's like, man, come on over here, man, come and look. So then Steve rose up, and he looks, and he's like, man, man, that's a brother whitewater rafting. He's like, I told you. And Steve was like, hey John. <laughs> I mean, it was like all these fish was coming to see, like, what the hell was he thinking? <laughs> so, um, they was all looking at me, and one of them goes, talk about a fish out of water. <laughs> and then they all just left. Oh, man. And then right about that time, I heard this angelic voice call me from behind. And it's one of the Red Company employees. She's in the video with me where I do the drawing, uh, the request drawing of, um, what's her name with the bony legs? How did I forget her name? She's famous. <laughs> you'll, you'll see the video when you go to the Rag Company's web, uh, YouTube channel. But uh, I hear her voice and it was like, it was like angels because it was like, they found me. <laughs> and then, uh, I'm, here, I'll let that part of the video play. Here, here it goes. Oh, is that where it is? Okay. Uh, let me get my footing. Is it easier where you are? Okay, let me see. Okay. Hey, if there's any fish over here that are coming home with me. Okay. Just ride the little ride. I had to take the big ride. Ah. Whoa, how far down did I go past? I went a little bit, huh? Ah. Oh 
walk the bank. Shorter walk, which way? Okay. I think, which boat? The one, oh, that's not the one we were in. Uh, I can't abandon my team. So now I'm walking my butt back to where everybody else is and I'm leaving a little message for Gabe who's crazy behind talked me into doing this in the first place and uh, so I'll let this part of the video roll where I'm talking to Gabe. So here, here it goes. I think this thing is still recording. <sighs> and when I get up there, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> oh boy. <sighs> Talking me into this crazy stuff. Tell you what, if anybody asks me if I want a drink of water, I'm gonna kill them. <laughs> I drunk up more lake than. Uh. I tried swimming after you. Oh, you didn't? Where's my dad? He doesn't have shoes. Oh, your dad came? He doesn't have shoes to rescue you. Oh. I swam after you. Oh, that thing's so Yeah, no. And uh, so Gabe turns off the camera, and that's that's the end of the you, the video part of it. Um, and uh, so I, I go down, <laughs> I go down to where everybody else is, and uh, and that's when it dawns on me how freaking old I am. You know, I ain't. I used to be crazy when I was young. I was crazy. I don't do stuff like this anymore. I don't, I don't know what I was thinking of. I just. And that fresh air and no humidity out there in Boise must have infected my mind or something and made me do something crazy like that. Because normally I've been like, oh, hell no. <laughs> I wouldn't even try that. But uh, at least I can say I did it once. Now I might even, because I'm going to be back next year. We're going to do another clinic next year. And um, and I'll go, if, if they do it again, I'll do it again. But this time, 
I have a better idea. Number one, I have a better idea of what to do. Number two, I will not be going off jump rock with the kids. That ain't gonna happen. And number three, Mother Nature, I got nothing but the utmost respect for you. Baby, don't dunk my butt no more <laughs> because I am done. Oh man, I know how to hang on now and but uh, I had a blast. I had a blast. It was a good time. And uh, so I just wanted to share that with you all and take this time to thank uh, uh, Jeff and Carolyn and all the folks at the Red Company who showed me a great time. Uh, I can't wait to do it again. And uh, next year, the show's probably going to be twice as big and twice as good. And, and I'm looking forward to it. So that's... Um, that was my experience. That was just part of my experience uh, with the Rad Company out in Boise. So uh, you all be sure and go over to the Rad Company's uh, YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash the Rad Company, all one word, and check out the three videos that I've uploaded. I'm not going to upload them to my channel. I want them to stay on the Rad Company's channel so that uh, we can introduce you all to the stuff they have called some. Uh, uh, Dane has some really good informative videos that will tell you a lot about microfiber so so that you can get the scoop from the source check out Dane in his videos uh, for all of you who have called the rag company on the phone and spoken with Dane uh, you probably think of him as this six foot five Adonis that looks like Thor and um, Wait till you see his video. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha, Dane. <laughs> yeah. ah, we had fun while we was out there. Oh, man. So go check that out and uh, uh, get hip to what's going on over at the Red Company. Again, they're going to be, they're carrying now Optimum's uh, polishes. So uh, their line of products. So you can get all of Optimum's line there. Pads, polishes, you can get your towels, then you get all this stuff in one spot. So that's that's sweet. Um, and uh, of course, you know, I ain't even got to tell you about the towels and, and the price of the towels. We, we've been over that thoroughly, and so you know how good that is. So that's uh, this video, and uh, I plan on bringing another video up here shortly. I'm using a new... I'm doing, I'm recording my videos a new way using a different camera, using a whole different setup. Uh, so part of the video is going to be high def, part of it's not. And when I don't need it to be high def, I'm not going to make it high def because it takes like two days to upload one video to YouTube. You wonder why I don't put out a whole bunch of videos? It's waiting on them to upload that kills me. But uh, you all will see that. So um, that's this video. I want to throw a quick shout out to uh, the boys over at Hawkish Detail, uh, Masters of Shine. I want to throw a shout out to them because they came through when we needed a part uh, for, the, for the clinic and uh, really saved the day. So shout out to you guys. Thanks. Appreciate everything you did. Uh, so that's pretty much it for this video. Stay tuned for more. I think I'll have one going up shortly. And like I've been promising and haven't got around to it yet, interior videos are going to be coming next. So until then, boys and girls, this is the Junk Man, shining out.